The Sabbath is a reminder of what our whole life is supposed to be. It's just an intentional, it's a more extreme, if you will, um, uh, manifestation of what daily life with Christ is. Daily life with Christ is supposed to be restful. If, if I'm exhausting myself throughout the week, it's probably not um, just because, you know, I'm not, you, know, I could, you could take a Sabbath day and still like totally exhaust yourself the other six days. You can turn the six days into a nightmare. Um, but to, to take that, to go from that place of rest, of uh, enjoying the, the communion, the fellowship with the one who made you, mm-hmm. and knows you inside and out, and to go from that place into the rest of the week, rather than going like working for the weekend, like there's like a song about that, right. um, but instead working from, from the weekend, working from, the working weekend. from the Sabbath, like yeah. taking that rest and letting that carry you forward into the, the next week. When you say that, that makes me immediately, that takes me back to, to Genesis. And it makes me it think, always goes back to Genesis. It goes back to Genesis. And it makes me think about this, this order in which uh, mankind was put on the earth. And so yes. again, you have the seventh day, everything was good. Mm-hmm. God finished his work. Yes. And it was then that he put man in the garden. So, yeah. so in that sense, man was put in the garden to work it to again to fill the earth mm-hmm. rule subdue have dominion multiply mm-hmm. all the all the fivefold commission For that sure. God gave them but they were intended mankind was cr- intended to work from that place of rest and right. completeness right. right if he was made at the end of the sixth day then it wasn't as if God said okay and here's your garden you're going to keep it there's still and get to work to do Right. There's things to do, but you're not going to do anything today. Right. Today, we're just going to have fun. Yeah. You're going to be with me. We're right. going to walk together and we're going to name things. It's going to be great. Yeah. There's a book that I, I don't know if you've read this book, but I know you know of Watchman Me, yes. the author. And so I do know of um, him. He's got a lot of good stuff. And I know stuff that probably both of us wouldn't, wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't agree we're with. We're all but, fallible. But right. Yeah. But he wrote a book and this it's just this little book mm-hmm. called Sit, Walk, Stand. And this book, okay. like changed my life in yeah. many ways. Um, and so have you read that book by the way? I have not. Okay. So it's, it's this I'm guessing I, it's based on Ephesians. Right. So, and it's this, there's these three key moments in Ephesians where we're seated with Christ, you know, walking right. in the spirit and then standing, you know, so you don't you know. need to read the book. You could just write your own. I just, books. well, I don't read all these books cause I just read the Bible. Yeah. Instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like they got to the chase. Right. Cause usually these books are just, you know, yeah. pointing you at something in the Bible. E- like, expounding. But, yeah. but it is that idea that you just said, uh, that you see in Ephesians, which again, I think if you see that in Ephesians, it's what we talked about in the first part, that it yes. is pointing you back. It sure. seems like Paul points you back to Sabbath in Genesis 1. Mm-hmm. But that order, that order of sit, mm-hmm. walk, stand, yeah. that you're saying comes from Ephesians. Firstly, as mm-hmm. a Christian, yes. we're talking about what it, for disciples, for people wanting to follow God, mm-hmm. there's this important order of first sit, mm-hmm. then walk, then stand. Yeah. Um, and so you might even put different words in it. You might you might not say walk and stand. You might interchange those. But what does that mean for you? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and maybe dig in a little bit more to the Ephesians thing you were getting at there. Mm. Well, I think it's um, just another example of sort of the, what's almost counterintuitive nature of the kingdom of God. Exactly. That it's these things are in the opposite order, right? We would think that, you know, or, you know, maybe, maybe you might have walk and stand and the other, but like, we think that we got to do battle against the enemy. We got to stand our ground against the enemy so that we can then walk with the Lord. And then eventually at the end of the long, exhausting journey, we finally get to sit and enjoy the, the fruit, you know, the banquet, mm. the meal of our communion, of our relationship with him. Uh, whereas, you know, Paul, Apostle Paul and teaching the, the church at Ephesus, you know, uh, you know what it means to be, you know, members of this this new kingdom that Christ has brought. Actually, presents these things in the opposite order, and that the the, the starting place is not like we we don't even think worry about the powers and principalities stuff until the very end, mm-hmm. right? We we start with just total um, laser beam focus on Christ and and who He is and His deep love for us that we can't even measure or comprehend, and and soaking 
in that, mm -hmm. soaking in that. And it's it's interesting how you said that this is like an upside down concept. That mm -hmm. this this idea um, that we're we're talking about this order of for for believers uh, sitting, walking, standing. Again, this this is a title of a book. I just I think there's some biblical principles in it. Sure, um, but but. You do you do see that emphasis in the New Testament on on this this upside down order. Um, I can't remember the word you use for that, but but it seems um, impractical and and just like it doesn't make sense yeah. that that the first thing God would want us to do, the first action, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that. The, the the thing that he initially requires of us mm -hmm. is that we sit down. Right. And relax. Mm -hmm. And uh, it makes me think of Jesus in John 6 when the, the Jews come and say, what must we be doing yeah. to be doing the works of God? Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, this is the work of God that you believe mm -hmm. in him. And so he's saying the first thing, the thing God really wants you to do mm -hmm. is to, <laughs> I mean, in my mind, I understand mm -hmm. saying like is to stop thinking that God wants you to do something right. and just believe and trust in what he's already done, right. rest in that. Right. And so, but it's not that it stops there. It doesn't stop at just that. Mm -hmm. um, again, going back to Genesis, God it didn't end at the rest, but but from that rest, it went into, it was, it was intended to move into productivity, mm -hmm. work, multiplication mm -hmm. of the image of God. But if I think if we don't start there, if we don't start from first sitting down, you know, yeah. like Paul says, we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. So we have to first know our identity. We have to first know who, who God is and what he has freely given us, what we already have available to us, have what we already have been given. We first have to know those things and believe those things, yeah. which is sitting and then from there we can walk and uh, walk in this world as Christians, walk in this world as disciples, fill the earth and multiply yeah. and stand against the enemy and ultimately do what God wanted us to do, which is fill the earth with his image. Right. But don't you think that if we don't, you know, if we, if we misplace Sabbath and all mm -hmm. that, yeah. um, the rest... Mm -hmm. How is that? How is that going to impact our success at spreading this image of God, which goes back to I think the first part mm -hmm. where we talk about yeah. this: the image of God, the character of God, right in the earth. Yeah. Uh, so, if we we lose the plot, the story doesn't end up in the same, and this, you don't get the same ending. Mm -hmm. You know, if we go if we start off in the wrong direction, if we forget who we are and, and why we're doing this, we can't expect to be successful in the mission that we've been given. And I think it's it's by design that God gives us the reward before we've done anything. Yes. You know, Sabbath is a reward. That's an interesting way of saying it. Yeah, yeah, Sabbath is a reward. Um, Christ is our great reward, and he gives us himself fully before we've done anything to earn it. He doesn't make us earn the right to be in relationship mm -hmm. with him. He just simply gives us himself. And then from that place, um, we then, you know, take up our cross and follow after him. You know, we've experienced the reward first. And then we go mm -hmm. and we do the hard stuff after already receiving the reward. So it's like we're not doing the hard stuff for the reward. We're actually, you know, taking a little bit of a time out from the reward sometimes to go do the hard things. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're saying we, we do the hard things and the empowerment almost mm -hmm. to because do because we've received the reward already is because we already have it. Yeah. Which is, that's, <laughs> that's the gospel, isn't it? That's yeah. Christianity. And yeah. that seems to be, it makes no as, sense. It makes no know? sense. And isn't it such a stark contrast between other religions? That oh, absolutely. Of, because, you know, you, most people would say, you know, if I were to hire you for a job and I said, Jordan, I'll, I'll pay you a million dollars. Um, I don't really, I want you to dig a ditch. From, from here to Topeka, Kansas. Mm -hmm. I'm about paying a million dollars. Would you dig that ditch? 
I probably want it. That's a long way. That's a long way. You know, what over ten million dollars would you do bid this? It's getting closer. I'd try, 100 million. I, I would try it for that. Yeah, for a hundred million. Yeah. Okay, I, I'd attempt. It's gonna be a hard. Okay. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna take <laughs> right. you a while. And I'm gonna like, and I'm gonna pay you in advance. Uh-huh. Here's a hundred million deposit yeah. in your account, Jordan, right yeah. now. Are you gonna dig that ditch? How how hard are you gonna work on digging that ditch? Honestly. Probably not very hard. Right. And that's what most people say. So like, this makes no sense. The gospel, yeah. like, and, and God is too, he's too generous. This is no way that this could be. Why would God give you the reward right. that you haven't earned? Yeah. Something holy about our God. There's uh-huh. something unique about him. Yeah. He's not like us. Yeah. And it seems like it gets to the fact that God, God looks at uh, the inward. Mm-hmm. God looks at the heart, man, looks at the yeah. outward. And so God is interested in our hearts, what our hearts are toward mm-hmm. him. Right. And so this order that you're you're that we're talking about, mm-hmm. um, rather than rather than producing like this this example, which I was trying to figure out if there's a trick question or not, but <laughs> um, rather than producing that that idea of, you know, well I already have what I need, so Yeah, why would I go and do anything? Why don't I yeah, I think through the Holy Spirit, doesn't it produce uh, this fact that God gives us the gift at the forefront? Mm-hmm. It seems like in those who really get that, mm-hmm. those who really get that, when when we really understand that, mm-hmm. it, it produces this thankfulness mm-hmm. and this then willingness to lose your life, you know, mm-hmm. to lose your life right. instead of trying to save it, to to forsake all for the sake of Christ, um, whether that's outwardly where you literally sell everything you have and move to China to do missions, or just inwardly where the things in this earth, the things that maybe you once held so dear and saw as the most valuable become secondary or, or more down the list in comparison to God. And so doesn't, doesn't this order in in the gospel, doesn't it actually have the exact opposite effect of what illustration you just gave? And then right. why, why is that? Right, because there must be something more to it. Yeah. And, and that's why I think, it, you know, the, the $100 million, whatever, is sort of a, a bad analogy. But I think I used it because I think that's what most people think, you know, being a Christian is about. Yep. You get some kind of reward in heaven that's now yours and you don't have to earn it mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. Uh, because they... People who don't understand the Christian faith um, and can only compare it to other religions, they, they don't really understand what we mean when we say it's it's really not about, it's, it's cliche, but it's true. It's not about a religion, it's about relationship. Mm-hmm. That the gift is the relationship with God, the intimacy, the communion with God. And if you're walking with communion with God, like truly, he's speaking to you and he's sharing things with you. You're sharing things that are important to you, to him, mm-hmm. and he's sharing things that are important to him, to you. Mm-hmm. And, and how can you love someone? Um, like, what would you hold back if it was in your power to do something that they asked you to do? Right? If you're a good husband, if you're a good father, if you're a mm. good friend, mm-hmm. you know, you're a good friend. If I called you up and said, hey, Jordan, I need your help, you know, we're going to move. You know, you hate moving, it sucks, but, you know, really could use your help. You're going to help me because of the, the relationship that we have. Not because you're obligated to me, not because I'm, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to come and shoot you if you don't do this. You right. know, I'm going to end your life, right. you know, kind of a thing like fear or punishment fear or based, whatever. Yeah. Right. It's it's based on on love. And that's so much more beautiful and dynamic um, than just simply about, you know, some kind of heavenly reward someday yeah. or whatever. But Nasser, if I get the gift at the front, mm-hmm. if it's just uh, freely given to me, I don't have to do anything. I just yeah. believe and accept it. Yeah. Why, you know, as some have, some have been saying, yeah. why not just then go out and, you know, go get drunk every weekend and go to, you know, I don't want to be, you know, gross, but, you know, strip clubs and, mm-hmm. and indulge in pornography. And oh, yeah. these, yeah. these are things that, th- these sure. are examples that somebody has been giving to me regularly when I, when I mm-hmm. present this sure. concept. Sure. And I've, I've heard it many times before. I've heard it from, you know, from Muslims. I've heard it from many people who are critical and d- again, don't understand really the, the, um, what, what the heart of is of the, of the gospel mm-hmm. and the Christian faith. And I say, you know, to that, 
um, you know, which of you, you know, if you're married, you know, once you've got the ring on your spouse's finger, it's like, great, now that we're married, awesome. Till death do us part, I'm gonna go do all those things that right. you just said. Right. Like what in the world is wrong? Like you've yeah. got some serious, yeah. you need you need to go get some mental help mm-hmm. or something. Like there's something really flawed yeah. in your in your thinking, your personality. You think that's, you're totally comfortable mm. doing that to someone you love. Um, you know, we talked about, um, uh, an earlier session about uh, the the relationship between um, the Ten Commandments that there, there there are two sets of five, and the two sets overlap one another. Um, do you know what? And this is the, probably one of the most obvious ones. I think if if the five are actually a chiasm, so there's actually a center, the that the center one. You're talking in Genesis. I'm talking about. Um, uh, oh, oh, the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments yeah. are chiasm. Yeah, I think I think it's actually a double chiasm. Uh-huh. And so the the two pieces, the two commandments that go together, would then be the the third and the eighth. They would be the center mm-hmm. of each of the five, and they go together. And it's don't commit adultery. Mm-hmm. And what's the vertical expression of that? Don't have any other gods. Uh huh. Yeah. Don't commit adultery on your wife. Uh huh. And don't commit adultery against God. Interesting, yeah. And that's those are the center of this whole thing that the other commandments, the other eight, are all swirling around these two centers that are actually, you know, just different dimensions Which of the about same love, principle. It's right? about it's about, it's about love, love. It's about loyalty. Loyalty. It's about loyalty and faithfulness. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, people that say, well, what's to keep you from being unfaithful? Now that you've received the reward, uh, same thing. Well, I've I've received the reward, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, of you know the blessings of relationship with my wife, and we have children, and all of these things. So I've gotten the re- the reward up mm-hmm. front in a way, in a manner of speaking. So just go do whatever you go want. Do whatever I want. But yeah. then what would that do to the, the reward? Right. What would that do to the relationship that right. is the reward itself? The relationship is. Oh, the, the reward. relationship yes. is soured. Yeah. Right. I'm. Why would I destroy the reward? Yeah. And that's it right there. Right. That that's I think that's where you just hit hit it right right on head. That the relationship is the reward, and that's that is the problem with that ideology. When I when I present the gospel and say, look, it's a free gift by faith. Mm-hmm. You simply embrace what God has really done for you. And this whole yeah. concept of Sabbath is kind of it's saying that same idea that God gives us everything this completeness up front Mm -hmm. and then invites us this first just sit down and and receive what he's freely given us but rather than the opposite of working to to earn the right to sit down yeah um and so when people come and say well okay then i guess you could just go out and you know just sleep with prostitutes for the for the rest of your life and and do Mm -hmm. all the and they start going into all this gory detail yeah and i'm like you're in my mind, when I hear that, that tells me that that person's concept of their faith in God mm-hmm. is completely about right. the consequences. It's yes. like, what are the consequences? It's, it has nothing to do with faithfulness toward God mm-hmm. or knowing and believing God's faithfulness toward you. It has mm-hmm. nothing to do with love for God or mm-hmm. really knowing and believing God's love for you. It's all yeah. about how much can I get away with? Right. How much can I? Because they're approaching. The they're approaching the story from the angle of they're still in slavery. Mm-hmm. They're just instead of slavery to Pharaoh, I'm in a slave to this god. Mm-hmm. And this god's relationship to me is slave master to slave. Right. And the slave, all they can do is is be anxious about doing something wrong or making sure they do things just right, so that the master is happy and they yep. get their reward. Mm-hmm. Whether that's, you know, oh, I get an extra biscuit at the end of the day or, you know, I get a day off right. every, you know, three months or something like that. Right. That's what it's all about. And if the master says, no, you can have as many biscuits as you want. You can take as much time as you want. Of course, the slave mentality is, well, then great. I'm not doing any more work then. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go. I'll be in the bath. You he know? doesn't care about the slave master. Right. Who's been mistreating him. Right. And if the slave master only becomes nice. Like, well, then great. Right. I'm going to go have fun now. Mm-hmm. But if it's it's the relationship is instead father to child. And you know that you're, you have, you're secure in that relationship. And you, there's nothing you can, there's nothing you did to make yourself your parent's child. Mm-hmm. That was just how you were born. 
you were born into this family mm-hmm. and you belong to this family. And, and you can be either want to be in or not want to be in, but either way, it doesn't change intrinsically. You are part of this family and you belong together. And, and if you have a good parent, they, they love you regardless um, of whether you're meeting their expectations or not, whether you perform well or not. They, their, their love for you isn't based on your performance. It's based on the fact that your identity is their, you're their child. And if you transfer this over to a relationship with God as a heavenly father who loves us even more amazingly than any of the best parents any of us could have ever had, and we know that that relationship is secure no matter what. So now it's just about, I want to enjoy the, the, the fruit of this relationship. Mm-hmm. I, want to, I want to know, like, I have access to the God who made the universe. And I sometimes have, you know, evenings where I have hours long, just like conversations with God. And I was like, he's sharing stuff with me. And it's like blowing my mind. And I'm like, I'm in awe of the fact, why is God even speaking to me? Who am I? But I'm his child. I'm not a slave. Mm. Um, I serve him, but I serve him as his son. Mm. And that's such a different, it's just like a completely different worldview. Completely different. It's, yeah, it's like a totally different approach Mm -hmm. to, to. Spirituality, to God, all of it. And I don't know, and I'm not to say that there isn't one, but I don't know of any other religious system or, or, you know, belief system, faith system Mm -hmm. that, you know, takes that mm-hmm. perspective. Uh, another belief system that has that order where the blessing, the mm-hmm. gift, the co- our completeness, God's full acceptance is given right at the outset. Mm-hmm. It's given at the beginning. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not like if you do this, if you commit this long, if you put in this much right. time, then maybe... You'll earn this. Maybe you'll, you'll earn get, nirvana. Yeah, you'll, you'll earn you'll heaven. You'll earn your 70 virgins. Right. You'll earn your whatever. Yeah, what, what's so unique about what Jesus taught, what the, the apostles taught, what the gospel in the biblical gospel is, is that it's the exact opposite, where God's full acceptance, we mm-hmm. receive that at the outset. We get mm-hmm. that at the beginning, and then we're just, again, we're invited to receive that and then yeah. to go forth from that place. and Just and, like the Sabbath. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like the Sabbath, right? Right. Uh, and so the Sabbath becomes a metaphor. A metaphor of the for gospel. The whole, the whole, our whole walk with God. Right. Our yeah. whole walk. Yeah. Which is why this is so important. The Sabbath mm-hmm. is so important, mm-hmm. and, and, and why it's so important to understand what it is about and what it's not. Exactly. To understand why it's not this religious mm-hmm. duty, but it's actually yeah. this beautiful gift mm-hmm. that tells a story yes. about our relationship with God and how God mm-hmm. intended his image bearers to relate to him in order to function properly. Yes. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's what Paul said in Romans when he was preaching the gospel, he was getting these accusations of, so let us sin so that grace may abound. Right. <laughs> right Isn't yeah. it that same? Right. If God's thing? being glorified by all these sinners coming to Christ, well then I'll be the worst right. sinner of all. Right. God will get more glory. Yeah. And I, I just, I don't think it can be emphasized enough. I just, mm-hmm. just the the element of relationship that you said the relationship is the reward. Mm-hmm. And so for those approaching this gospel of salvation by faith and your apprehension to it or your criticism of it or the stumbling block in your mind to embrace that mm-hmm. idea of the gospel, if it's this idea that, this is a promotion of sin or lawlessness or um, reckless, mm-hmm. sinful living, right. then you're just missing it. You're, you're not right. understanding it. Because again, like you said, if you put a ring on your wife and she puts a ring on you, you love each other, you, you, made, a you commitment. made this commitment, you get married. Yeah. Is your only motivation to not go out and cheat and to, to just talk terrible about her behind her back and to you know, steal money out of her purse when she's not looking and, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, steal medicine out of the medicine cabinet that maybe she needs. Is your own, only motivation to not do those sinful things because you're afraid of the possible consequences you might receive if you do those things? No. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and as insane as that analogy sounds. Yeah, and yet like, we use that with God. Yeah. That's what we. Yeah, and it's because we're not approaching it from a, uh, an intimate relationship. Exactly. And what Sabbath tells us, and I think what the, the gospel yeah, tells us, is totally. that God wants us to approach it 
Absolutely. In that way. Absolutely. And it's somebody that wants evidence of it and that it's not just a weird New Testament teaching or something, that this goes all the way back to, you know, right within the vicinity of this commandment about Sabbath is, um, you know, right before God gives these 10 words, the 10 commandments mm -hmm. uh, to the people, um, he says this um, in, in Exodus 19. Um, so uh, I'll pick up in verse three. Um, so while Moses went up to God, Yahweh called to him uh, out of the mountain saying, thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles wings and brought you to myself. Now, did he literally send the eagles like in Lord of the Rings to come and take him out? Uh, I don't no. know. So he's speaking there. poetically. Right. He's speaking poetically. Right. Um, but you know how I said, like, look, but think about what kind of, uh, of of poetry, what kind of category of poetry. It's like, I brought you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. This is like bridegroom to bride. Right. This is intimate so language. language. He didn't say, yeah, I set you free like a conqueror. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I, I, I brought you to myself. I wooed you mm -hmm. like a bride. And it look, it's even even uh, thicker here. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, so this is like wedding vows. If you'll, if you'll recite these vows with me, if you'll pledge yourself, if you'll commit yourself to me, I'm, I'm ready to commit myself to you. You shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. And that word treasured possession is again, bride language, you know, um, this idea that, you know, you are the most precious thing and like all the world is mine, but you are my precious mm -hmm. thing. And it's like the, a king bridegroom kind of a language to them. Um, for all the earth is mine and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you shall speak to the people of Israel. And so that's the right before we get these commandments. That's what this whole thing mm -hmm. is about. These commandments are not about rule keeping to avoid punishment from an angry God. They are the vows that we, by our own free will, recite and say, I will, I will, mm -hmm. I will. You know, we do when we met, do you promise to do this? Yes, I do, I do, I yeah. do, right? And it's it's that same thing. Will you, will you, will you recognize that I and I alone am, am God? Yeah, I do, mm -hmm. I do, I say that, you know? Will you um, not make any any other images, mm -hmm. you know, of me or any other gods? Yeah, the, I, yeah I do, I do. Um, you know, have no other gods before me, I do. You know, all of these things, will you keep the Sabbath as a way because I want, I want everyone who's watching our special relationship to get a sense of what makes this so unique and mm -hmm. so holy and so special. Will you, will you show them who I am and how you live your life? And you say, I do. And it's about, it's about that loyalty mm -hmm. and it's about that love and it's about the intimacy. And it always was that from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. It was never about, people think the Old Testament God is somehow all about law and New, New Testament God is about grace. It was all grace and mercy, mm -hmm. you know? And, and a little bit, these same people that said I do at the thing are gonna commit horrid right. adultery on the and wedding God night to be and to God's going to be faithful to them anyway. And, and when Moses wants to make sense of that, says, God, show me, help me understand who you are. He says, I am Yahweh, Yahweh, a God merciful and gracious. That's the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And he just wants people, human beings that will partner with him and, and revealing his character, his mercy and grace in particular, and his faithfulness and love and patience to the whole world mm -hmm. so that they too can come and be a part of this beautiful relationship and this beautiful family.